Hi developers, I'm Hossam Delahi, Microsoft MVP. In this video, we'll learn how to use Airbag with Kubernetes in Minikube. Airbag stands for Role Based Access Control, which is a security approach in order to limit access to certain resources within the cluster. For example, we might have a group of users who are the developers. Those developers should be able to create deployments and create pods inside our cluster. So we need to grant them access to create or to use the command kubectl create, for example. And in addition to those users, maybe you have some other set of users who belong to another uh, department. And we don't want those users to change any configuration from the cluster. So we'll grant them access to only read information about the pods and the deployments. So they can only run kubectl get deployments, for example. They cannot create a new deployment. Kubernetes in itself doesn't have an API for creating users. For that, we'll be relying on certificates in order to identify the users. So we'll start our tutorial today by creating a certificate for our user. Then we'll create the user. After that, we'll use the role and the role binding Kubernetes objects in order to grant access to certain resources for our created user. So let's start. In this tutorial, we'll be using lots of commands. So if you want to find them, you can go to my GitHub repository right here airbag kubernetes minikube and you will find all the commands inside the steps dot shell where here i have listed all the commands that we'll be using in this tutorial in addition to that you can find also the role dot yaml and the role binding dot yaml files that we'll be uh, using later in this video here i have started by creating a new folder where I, i'll put all my files inside uh, this uh, folder so let's start by the step number one, which is generating the certificate for our user. To do that, we need first to create a key, then the CSR. So let's start by creating the key. Here I'll be using OpenSSL in order to generate a user1.key for my user. And here you see it was generated user1.key. If we take a look at it, then here it is an RSI a private uh, key. After that, we need to create the CSR. The CSR is the, the certificate uh, request. So I'll go and copy this one, then run it. And you see that uh, here we are specifying the user one key that we have already generated. And we want the out output to be in a file called user one dot CSR. That what was generated in this file right here this certificate uh, request and note that here also we have specified the uh, user one and the uh, era labs to be the uh, group name after that we need to create the certificate itself so for this certificate we need to first check if the certificate for uh, minikube is uh, inside this folder so I'll go and run ls minikube and here we need to check that the ci.key and ci.cert exists inside the uh, minikube folder because we'll use those in order to generate the certificate. For that here you see that in this uh, command that we'll be using in order to generate the certificate we are pointing to the folder minikube ci key and the uh, certificate so let's go and run this uh, command in order to generate the certificate for our user and here it tells us that the signature was okay and now the um, certificate was created inside the file user1.crt this certificate will be used by the cluster admin in order to uh, to tell Kubernetes to trust this certificate. So this is the goal of the uh, step number one to generate this certificate. Now we'll move to the step number two, which will be using, uh, which will um, use this certificate with the generated key in order to create a user in Kubernetes. 
So let's go and do that. Here, I'll go and use the command kubectl config set credentials in order to uh, you to create the user one, which will ha will use this uh, generated certificate with the generated key. So this means user one will always use that certificate and the key. So let's run that. And now it tells us that user1 was set correctly. After that, we'll need to create the uh, context. And the context will be used by kubectl in order to identify the user. So here, we'll go and use conf kubectl config set context. We'll call our context user1-context. Uh, this one will point to our user1 that we have created. And it will be related to the uh, cluster uh, minikube and it will be scoped to the names to the default namespace and a user one context here will be used uh, in order to identify user one and each time we type a kubectl command so with that way kubectl will uh, or the kubernetes api will uh, identify and it will authenticate the user and here it tells us that user one context was successfully created we can check uh, if this is was really uh, created successfully by running kubectl config view here we should be able to see our user one that was created using the user one certificate and key and in addition to that we need uh, to be able to see that user one dash um, a context was created at the beginning of this file as we can clearly see it right here now in order to run kubectl commands as user one then we need to use the command kubectl config use context this one will switch the current context which is here a uh, mini cube so if we run for example kubectl uh, config current context here it will tell us that the current context is mini cube which have the full access to the cluster but now we want each uh, the user one that we have created to authenticate as user one not as mini cube so to do that I'll go and run kubectl config use context user1 context this one will switch minikube to use user1 uh, dash context so that kubernetes when it receives the kubectl commands it will also it will know that this is user1 dash, dash uh, context we can again run uh, config current context to see that now it gives us user one dash context so now we are ready to run commands as user one dash context so let's try for example to create a namespace i'll go and run the command kubectl create namespace but here it tells us that this operation is forbidden because user one cannot create resource namespaces in api group at the cluster scope and the same thing as if we go to try to uh, get pods for example then it will tell us also that this is forbidden why that is because our user one that we have created doesn't have any privileges access for until now we have just created the user we didn't tell kubernetes that this user have access to those resources so let's do that this is our step number three which is using the role and role binding to grant access to our user one so we'll be doing that using the role and role binding for that here i have prepared this two files the first one will be the role and the second one is the role binding let's take a look at the role here i have a kubernetes resource of type role which uses the api version uh, airbag and this role have a name 
pod reader and it is scoped to the default namespace. This rule will define some rules. So the, f the rules here is the resources. So this role will have access to the following resources, to the pods. So for the pods can perform the following operations or verbs. So we can uh, get all the pods, we can watch all the pods, and also we can list all the available pods on the default namespace. Note that here we are only specifying the pods resources, but we can also specify uh, deployments, services, and so on. So we can uh, name here all the Kubernetes uh, resources to which we want our user to uh, be able to access to. The same applies for the verbs. So here we can add the uh, create, for example, and update and edit and so on. Here because we want our user to be able only to read the uh, pods, we are only specifying those three operations, get, watch and list. He won't be able to change anything or any configuration inside our cluster. It's a read only access. So here we have only created the role. And we, now, in order to assign this role to our user one that we have created, we need to go through the role binding. For that, here I have my second file that I have prepared called role binding. Let's take a look at the format of this file. It's of type role binding. It uses the airbag API version. It has a name called read-pods. It is scoped to the default namespace. And it have two main sections. The first one is the subjects, then the role reference. For the subjects, here it tells that the kind is user. And here we are specifying the user that we want to give him uh, or to grant him access, which is here our user one. So make sure here you name this one as the user one that you have created with your uh, certificate. This will belong to the airbag group. And in the second section, we are binding the role. For that here, we are specifying the reference for the role, which will be the pod reader. So here, it will go and look for a role called pod reader, which is the one that we have created right here. So make sure to use the same name for that reference. So what this means is that now we have created the role to only uh, read information about our pods and that role will be assigned to user1. So let's now assign the, uh, this role to uh, user1. For that here I need to uh, go back to use the uh, minikube context. So let's do that because here I need uh, full access to the cluster in order to uh, deploy the roles or at least for now the user one that I have created doesn't have uh, privileges to create uh, roles and that makes sense because we want only the admin to be able to create those uh, roles. So here we have switched to minikube so now I can go and deploy the role and the role binding user using kubectl apply minus f then the role uh, dot yaml. This will create a new role in the Kubernetes configuration. For that, if I go and check here kubectl get roles, then we'll be able to see that a new role called podreader was created 12 seconds ago. We'll do the same now to deploy our uh, role binding. So kubectl apply minus f role uh, binding dot yaml file. It was successfully created and we can go uh, kubectl get role bindings in order to check that it was really created. 
and here we see that our uh, read pods role binding was successfully created now i'll go and switch to a user one context and try to do some operations now that we have switched it i'll go and try to create a new uh, namespace inside my cluster and here it tells me that this operation is forbidden because user one doesn't have this privileges to create a namespace because in our role we only specified pods we didn't specify a namespace right here in addition to that even if i go to say kubectl get pods then here it can list the running pods inside my cluster because it can perform get pods. I hope you like it, this tutorial and if you want to get more uh, details about it then I have created here uh, an article on Medium which uh, gives all the uh, steps that we have run it here where you can go and uh, uh, copy uh, copy paste the uh, commands right here in order to go faster and don't uh, uh, mistype the uh, commands so thank you